It's four o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Woohoo! <laughs> this week's starring special guest star, Mr. Steve Barton. Yeah, baby! <laughs> There, he's smiling. Yay, Steve is smiling. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, fake band. Thank you, fake audience. Welcome to the big show, Steve. How are you? Oh, no. I lost him. I can't believe it. That's all right. He'll be back. We know what to do. We've had this problem before. There he is. Uh, let's see. There you are. All right. Cool. Yeah, we have no idea, but the software that we use to make this happen just every now and then just decides to crap out, but we've figured out our, our way around it. Anyway, Steve, hi. How are you, buddy? Hey, Michael. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> oh, you are so welcome. Uh, you knew where I was going to be. I have nowhere to go. <laughs> that's true. I think we're all we're all home together. Yeah, that's funny because you can call people now and you know they're going to be home. That's right. Although I do venture out to my backyard sometimes and I leave the phone in the house. <laughs> and, and look at this. I've got a tan. First time in my adult life I think I've ever had a tan. I go out there and like do 10 minutes in the sun every couple of hours just to, you know, clear my head, get away from the laptop. Anyway, um, for welcome everybody in the chat room. Let's see, we will write you a song. Gloria Covington, Mike Sirisulo, Lamar Franklin, Dean Turner, Jay Williams, Robbie Hancock, Chaptress, uh, Funky Freddy, Great View, Emphatic, Bob Gunnerfeld, John Pearson, Carl Wurzbach, Wind Chimes, Alan McCool, Dan Weber. Hello, everybody. So, uh, if you are new to this and you've never seen an episode before, go ahead and smash that red subscribe button now um, because you're going to want to be subscribed to this channel. I can guarantee you that. Um, Steve Barden is a good friend, a longtime taxi member. He became a good friend because he is a taxi member who's figured it out and has become successful. Whoops, I'm seeing a light flashing on my phone. I want to make sure that... Okay. I'll make sure the staff isn't saying, you're not on, you're not on. Um, you guys can see us, right? Everything's working? Yes, there they are. Um, anyway, Steve is a production music composer for film and TV. His music can be heard on television somewhere in the world on a daily basis, and now a lot more of it's getting heard. Uh, his music is aired on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, ABC Family, A&E, American Heroes Channel, Animal Planet, boy, we're going through the whole alphabet here, Biography Channel, Bravo, Cooking Channel, Discovery Channel, E, Food Network, Game Show Network, HGTV, Investigation Discovery, Lifetime, MTV, National Geographic Channel, Oprah Winfrey, Outdoor Channel, Oxygen, PBS, Science Channel, Style Channel, Sci-Fi, TLC, Travel Channel, and Taxi TV. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Got to put that in there. Yeah, he's a multi-instrumentalist, uh, plays guitar, piano. Uh, are you still learning how to play the violin? I'm four years into it now. I'm are are you? mediocre. Okay, good. So, like, you would actually play it in front of people without being embarrassed? Yeah. Um, we, ha we have our, our little uh, uh, group of musicians that get together once a month, and once a year we do a performance. Wow. We get together, and uh, I performed uh, a couple of years in a row. Nice. And, and, and you see, uh, and, they're, and they're very generous. <laughs> <laughs> well, they know you. They feel sorry for you. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, you know, uh, he's done this stuff. He's done some film stuff. Um, I'm trying to get back to where he is. He's done some TV series. Um, he's a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a cat guardian. Uh, lives in Lakewood, California. Are you in Lakewood now? I, I am in Lakewood. Okay, so this is the update. Probably be here for a while. Okay, good. Oh, that's right. You have family nearby. Uh, uh, my daughter and my grandkids. I have a, a new granddaughter now. Oh, mazel tov. Um, how, how old is she? Uh, born February 4th. Wow, boy, did she come to the world at a strange time, huh? Yeah, I've only held her once. Oh, man. Well, soon enough, my friends, soon enough. <laughs> anyway, Steve is a frequent guest at the Road Rally. He's a frequent guest on Taxi TV. 
And as promised today, um, please forgive us again if this thing craps out, we'll be back momentarily. But as promised, Steve is going to create uh, what I like to call a CSI lab style. Uh, technically, I guess it'd be a tension cue. Um, but, you know, they have kind of their own genre, which CSI made famous, the womp, 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 womp kind of arpeggiated thing going on. And, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions lately, especially since I've been doing the, the daily uh, quarantine happy hours where people go, well, what do you guys mean when you talk about doing, um, uh, you know, like a, a developmental arc? What do you mean by a buttoned ending or a stinger ending? Um, so basically, Steve is going to do his thing. Uh, actually, I wish I had popcorn uh, because I'm just going to let him kind of talk us through it. He's done a little homework in advance because we've only got, you know, like 85 minutes to do this in, uh, which is a little short, even for somebody as good at this as he is. So he's picked some of his sounds in advance. He knows what he's going to do, but he is going to, in fact, build it track by track. So with that, I give you my friend, Mr. Steve Barden. Thank you. Um, so tension cues, crime drama cues, they're really kind of a mixed genre. Uh, they all have the basic, in, same basic ingredients, um, often the same as like a lot of trailer tracks. Uh, part of the one of the differences is that uh, trailer tracks would have a, like a lot of really heavy big drums, um, and a lot of the CSI kind of stuff will have little if no drums. In fact, I'm going to build a cue without any percussion today at all. Um, the lab stuff, I mean, there's really just like, uh, first of all, it's it's hybrid or orchestral so there's a lot of electronic elements uh, and it's actually probably leans more 60 70 percent electronic than it does orchestral instruments you could learn that if you bought this book right <laughs> <laughs> i forgot to mention steve is the author of this incredibly excellent book and you know i never recommend anything that i don't fully believe in buy this book sorry <laughs> so um so I've been I've been doing some of these cues for for a while now um, variations. I did an album for a for a library uh, that was geared towards uh, wrestling shows, and the only difference in the the music is um, the drums. Like so, they're all sort of based around minor keys because they're dark, uh, uh, a lot of tension. Um, and, and in the wrestling things, in, in the promos especially, you know, they would they would have fighters, you know, with hitting each other, you know. <laughs> and so they want to time that with big drum hits, okay. But it's the music, the underlying music form is really the same in all of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to build a cue today. Uh, as Michael said, I, I went through and I, and I p selected sounds that uh, I've either used a lot or I think that'll fit for this. And I, and I have an idea of what I want to write, but... Truly, I don't know what I'm going to write today. Um, um, people in the chat room are saying your voice needs to come up a little bit. I'm going to bring out the output on my end, but you may, I'll let you know in a minute. You may need to bring up your, your vocal mic a little. Yeah, uh, and my mic setting uh, is up as high as it can go. Okay. So I'll try, to, I'll try to speak a little bit louder. All right. Is that good hopefully, for you guys now? Hopefully this is a little bit better. You know what I say? They get what they pay for. There's right. a little, there, there's a little, a little lag before. Uh... Okay, so I'm going to try to build this cue uh, as best I can in the in the time allotted. Um, I I will upload the final product uh, probably on SoundCloud. Uh, you can just look up my name on SoundCloud. Um, I might, after this show, make some modifications to the final tracks and the final mixing and stuff because we just don't have enough time in this session to build, you know, a really great track. But I, I oh, thought you were a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a two-hour professional, I'm not a 90-minute professional. Um, okay, so first of all, I've thought about this track, what I want to write. So this is a CSI type of track, but I've, I've selected... Um, the this whole pandemic thing okay because we're all living through this and i guarantee you it, the moment shows go back into production all of these emergency shows these first responder shows they're all, all these dramas they're all going to be about the pandemic and dealing with that 
So uh, it is the queue is going to be tension. It's going to be more aimed at that as opposed to um, looking for the murder suspect or, or in the you know doing an autopsy on, on a patient. Well, we are still looking for a murder suspect, but it, it it's microscopic in size. <laughs> yes. Um, so I the first thing I always do when I'm I, I'm going to write a piece is select a name because then it helps me kind of visualize what it is that I'm writing. So I've, I've selected a title called uh, Pandemic Response. Okay. Um, and when you're building, I, I would suggest to everybody that you really start working on these kind of cues because they're going to be in demand. And naming is a very important. Uh, it helps uh, supervisors, you know, understand what the cue is about. So any wording that, that references viruses, uh, pandemic, uh, you know, COVID, coronavirus, any any of that stuff is going to be very helpful in uh, in laying out the foundation of, of these cues and what what they represent. Uh, so, given that, um, as I mentioned, these cues are ninety nine point nine percent going to be in minor keys, and so I've selected a D minor um, because, as you know, D minor is the saddest key of all. You watch Spinal Tap. <laughs> 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 okay so uh let's let's begin so um I, I unfortunately you can't see my dog you can't see what i'm doing so um you have to trust me when i i'll, I'll explain things as i'm going here so i've selected a bunch of uh, sounds uh and the first thing i'm going to do is i've added um a drone instrument and that's going to be the underlying sound for the track it may not go through the entire track i will edit it later Part of my workflow is that I just throw in everything. And I will go in and edit as I go. And this, this, this might be a, uh, um, an argument uh, of, I don't know how I can say this. I, I consider this, this type of music sound design. I don't consider it musical composition. And you might be offended by that statement. Um, but really the elements of musical composition is, is harmonic movement, melody, and rhythm. Um, most of these cues have very little melodic movement. Um, a lot of these tension cues are based around a single chord and it's just a lot of sound elements. And I, I consider, uh, when I build these things, I'm sculpting a piece of music. So that's why I say I will put in all kinds of stuff. I edited myself there. <laughs> and, and then I will just, you know, take stuff out, put stuff in. Um, and just so it, it, it moves, it has a lot of dynamics. Um, and it, and it, it, it builds from something very small to something very big. Uh, generally, this piece is going to be somewhat on the ta tamer side in terms of energy. Uh, as I mentioned, I won't have any drums in it. Uh, we're going to be using some ostinato instruments to uh, to keep the the piece moving uh, rhythmically, and um, and we'll just see what we where we can go with that. So uh, I'm going to start off with a um, a drone sound, and let me just play it. And I've got it. Uh, this is I'm going to try to make this a minute and a half, and I'm just going to play a few bars of it. And first of all, tell me if how the volume is on this. Good for me. How about you guys in the audience? <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, some people are saying a little soft. Other people are saying great. It's a, it's about a sixty percent good. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, with our setup here, um, you guys, I think you're gonna. If you can use headphones, it, it'll help. Um, because I, I can only get so loud. Right. Also, you know, turn up the volume on your computer or whatever you're listening on, folks. <laughs> it may be that you're just a pinch slow. I don't know. But anyway, go yeah. ahead, Steve. And I'm probably not going to blow out your ears, but uh, it's right. very loud in, in my room here. Um, okay, so, so the first thing I'm going to start off with is um, a, a piano intro intro. Um, and it may or may not include the drone ultimately. I don't know yet, but I'm going to keep it in there. 
And so I, I'm using a piano from Heaviosity called Ascend. And it kind of sounds like this. This one is the uh, delayed strums. Of, and these are affected instruments. They have Novo, which are affected strings, uh, Vent, Vento, which is uh, their woodwind library, Forzo, which is their brass library. And they're all traditional orchestral instruments, but they have crazy effects on them. So this is a piano uh, called the Ascend Piano, and this is their delayed strums. And I, I might end up using this. I've got a couple we're going to try. So it's, um, this is what it sounds like. Okay, I mean, you could probably build this on your own using delays and stuff, but they have some really nice sounds built in. This is a delicate, soft sustains. Just heavily reverberated. Okay. Uh, alternatively, I have a piano from uh, Project Alpha called Sad Piano, and it's a similar thing, um, heavy echo. Okay, so let's let's start with the first uh, Ascend Piano and just see what what we have with that. Uh, let's see if I have the metronome on. Let me just try this here. Okay, first of all, okay, I, I left the project set up at the default 120 beats per minute. Uh, I can tell it's already going to be too fast, so I'm going to move it down to 90. Um, and we, you know, we may adjust the tempo as we go through this piece. Let's try this again. And I, I, I'm just making this up as I go along, folks. It's like me in this show. Yes. <laughs> loud in my room here. All right. How did that sound out there? Sounds good. Okay. Let me just uh, play back, see what it sounds like here. Oh, crap. We will be right back with you. I have no idea why this is happening. will be there you are okay cool all right so did you do the playback while we were gone <laughs> are you doing I, st it? I stopped it as soon as we uh, as soon as the screen went black okay okay so in that little bit Where's my computer doing? Okay. That went, that went 48 seconds. So that's like half the piece right there. Um, I'm gonna run through this again. I'm going to mute that drone and I'm gonna try uh, uh, a cello. Cello is a, now this is gonna be a traditional cello. It's going to be, um, Drony, but also a little bit melodic. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is the um, cinematic studio strings cello. And let's see what happens. that better than the uh, the drone the drone was pretty synthy so this is still very acoustic sounding with a p just a piano and a cello um, all right um, this might be a little early so the first half is actually going to be kind of a slower movement and the second half is going to add a little bit more energy um, I am going to put in some cello, uh, sorry, some choir, some sopranos. So I want this to be very angelic um, because in my mind I'm picturing a scenario and this could be uh, somebody uh, with the virus laying on their deathbed and they can't see their loved ones, but they're separated by a glass, you know, and it's, it's very sad. Um, so this is um, from Voxos, Cine Samples Choir Library. All right, let's see what this sounds like. So we've got <laughs> instruments stopping at different places, but that's okay. We'll we'll figure it out. Um, I just had the thought that you're probably not playing anything at all. You've got, all this is on tape, and you're just sitting there moving around. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we're, we hope it'll it'll turn into something. Um, okay. Oh, oh, one of the things I I want to uh, introduce when the piece starts, and and we're going to add some. Um, some transition pieces, uh, transition sounds that move between sections. And one of, the, one of the first things that we do in any tension cue is start with some kind of uh, 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 like a cymbal uh, swish. Whoosh. And when, we, when they did the, um, uh, the music supervisor lady, what was her name, Ostrander? Uh, Laurel Ostrander, yeah. Laurel, yeah. That was one thing that I, I got out of that was that, you know, having these these little um, glissando effects into into any new track helps them in a transition you know right. um, editing pieces together um, so I will put that in at the end but uh, one of the things that's really nice is to do um, like a sub bass sound like a kick drum and I've got like um, let's see I am upset the one I want Oh, okay. This one is from Gravity, uh, another heavy instrument, and they have great risers, but they have this uh, subs menu, 
and we've got like this uh and i don't know if on on this microphone you're going to be able to hear that but it's a really deep sub uh kick drum before we go any farther i just want people are saying gosh i wish i could see his screen the reason um first of all you would see a tiny little screen because we're doing a split screen so that's one issue the other issue is we've tried in the past when i did ran and purcell a few weeks ago um going direct out of steve's audio and having the microphone and having my audio and us going back and forth randon and i spent like 45 minutes with bria and ariana none of us could solve the loop problem so that's why we're just doing it down and dirty it's about the composition today not about hearing in a perfect environment plus you're going to be able to hear it after the fact from soundcloud sorry had to say that good enough um so i'm going to introduce this sub kick sound uh on the very first beat. Um, and it's it's one of those things that's more, uh, uh, you feel it more than you hear it. So let's, let's see how this works. Okay. That's all it was. I hope you guys can hear some of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's reasonably good. Um, and, and by the way, when Laura Lostrander said that, she was talking about doing something to intro it, but not making an actual intro. It could be a drum turnaround, um, could be a backwards cymbal and kick like you're doing, you know, all those things. And I thought that was one of the most genius things she taught us all day. Absolutely. And let, let me go ahead and, and I'll insert, this is a, a swipe from uh, uh, the Project Alpha library. Uh, let's see, can I use it? You know, I'm going to just keep it basic. I, I don't want to, you know, hunt for sounds, but th they're all pretty similar. So you're going to hear this kind of a swish. Okay. And it's going to lead in just before the downbeat. Um, I might have to try this a couple times to one of the ways you could do this is that he actually, this guy actually provides wave files and you can drag in the wave file and then just visually move it around to hit that beat. Um, I've gotten pretty good at doing this with a MIDI note. <laughs> okay, so it was a little early, I think. My keyboard and everything's not in the usual place. I'm kind of looking around. Where is it? Sorry, I'm the guilty party. I made him move stuff so, <laughs> so that we had his whole face in the shot. <laughs> and my and my book. You got to see my book. That's right. Well, I could just do this for the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, I wish you could see this, see what I'm doing, because it's, it's starting off about a 16th note before the downbeat. Still a little early. Let me turn the metronome off. Yeah, that sounded great. Did it just loop? Okay, that's good. And so, as it, it turns out, it sounds like I've got one, two, three. I, I do have about a, a four bar intro. 
and that's only because the cello comes in with with a melody uh, four bars in sort of mark it marker there so I know this is really where the melody starts okay um, I have some uh, libraries that were uh, created by a company called Sample Hero, and they have specifically Dan Brown Jr. has done a lot of crime drama stuff, and he's created some libraries that um, incorporate a lot of the sounds that he's he's used. So we're just gonna um, just use some, you know, using this stuff is like, uh, you know, really standard kind of uh, CSI kind of stuff. Let me let's see. Oh, that might be nice leading into the melody. Yeah. Yeah, let's try that. Ended up being uh, two beats too late, so I'm gonna move it back there. Hmm. What if these are pitched? You know, I don't think I'm going to use that because the uh, the, the pitch really uh, conflicts with everything else. So unfortunately, I can't use that. You know, I, oh shoot, what did I just do? My, my screen sort of just went blank. I hit something. <laughs> oh no, what did I do? Probably uh, using wire cast technology. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, just hum the parts. Hello, where did you guys go? You're literally all black screens? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go make ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Are the Oh no, it rebooted. Oh my god. Wow. No, it's there. It just went to sleep or something. Robbie Hancock says, now this is some serious tension. <laughs> <laughs> you see me sweating? Yeah, you're like the guy in the pilot seat on airplane. Oh my God, there's no sound. <sighs> it's never happened before when you're off camera? <laughs> um... I have to close this project and reopen it. Okay. So this is going to take a couple minutes. That's so. all right. People can ask questions while it's rebooting. Yeah, please. Uh, like, do they make 
studio viagra for when your monitor goes dark <laughs> you know what i hit something on the keyboard and i have no idea what it did because it came back the project was still open yeah but it lost my connection to my uh vienna ensemble pro remote computer so uh i'll ex i'll explain that while uh, we're waiting for this to start up so i have a uh, um i have my main computer which is my daw i'm running cubase uh, but I have a, uh, a computer that I built a year ago, custom built computer. It's got 128 gig of RAM, and I'm using it for uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro, and it stores my my library of sounds, um, my orchestral template, and which includes a lot of hybrid instruments as well. Uh, contains about 3,500 tracks, so uh, over over 3,000 instruments uh, I'm loading, and I am using. Um, most of the libraries are contact libraries, and they, there's an advantage to using contact for memory footprint in that you can uh, you you can um, purge all of the samples to lower the memory footprint and disable instances of Vienna. Ah! <laughs> Come back. This is why I, I love the content when we do these remotes, but I hate the technology. Come on, Steve. Uh, you will be in a second. There you are. All right, that's good. I'm going to start doing all taxi TVs solo. <laughs> no technology, <laughs> no nothing. I mean, not that I'm not enjoying having you on the show, but... You know, I have a love-hate relationship with technology. I mean, it's amazing, but, you know, when stuff like this happens, and sometimes you just have no idea what went wrong. Oh, my God, this is crazy. All right, I have to reboot the computer. Okay. Well, it was good talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Crazy, man. Well, good time to plug the book. Seriously, if you don't have this book, you are operating at a deficit compared to all your competitors. Um, it, it's highly informative, covers a wide and incredibly wide range of topics, not just about the music, but about the business. And it's got an incredibly good glossary. I've actually stolen two of the things out of your glossary and put them on the taxi website. I didn't do them word for word, but I went, oh, I should have that in the taxi website glossary. So <laughs> thank you for the inspiration. Um, and, uh, gosh, who was it? Kevin Kiner. Um, you met him. Kevin Kiner is a, a TV composer of, uh, you know, he's, he's an upper crust kind of guy. He's well known in the industry. He does some big stuff. And you met him at a road rally and ended up uh, working with him as a result of meeting him at the road rally, right? Um, yes. A ended up getting a lot of work through him. Um, it was a great learning experience. Um, started off doing dramedy stuff on a project he was working on. Um, and it was one of those deals that, you know, with the bigger composers, whenever they, they take on assistant composers, or if you want to call them ghost writers or whatever, um, they take 50% of, of what you're earning, your writer's share. Right. You know? and, I, and I always say, you know, never give up your writer's share, but there are, there are some cases where it's worthwhile to do it um, because I ended up getting a lot of placements um, through this library that I that I created, and then a few years later, um, in fact, I asked him to write the the foreword for my book, and uh, then he goes, "Hey, you play guitar, right?" And I said, "Yeah." Uh, Do you play classical guitar? Yeah, I play you know nylon string. Um, he says, I, "You know, I also do I do the music for Jane the Virgin. Do you want to write some cues for that show?" I said, "Yeah," and so that ended up being. Um, one of the cues that I wrote ended up becoming Jane's love theme, and they used that oh, used that for the last two seasons of the show of the series. 
So, you know, good things can come from it. You know, you got to kind of weigh your options and, and see if, if it's going to work for you. Well, yeah, it's not like somebody was just being greedy and taking it. He was actually creating a, uh, an opportunity for you not only to get stuff on the air, but build other relationships, build a reputation within the industry, get the experience, all that stuff. So, Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and there are there's the, you know a fair share of, of uh, shysters out there that will take advantage of you. Um, you know, read my book and learn how to avoid that. <laughs> That's right. It says right here in this book, avoiding shysters. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's loading. I'm I'm so sorry. It's going to take me another couple minutes. It's okay. Um, Nancy Khalil wants to know what genre did you write before you went in this direction. I've done everything. I mean, I've been writing music since the '70s. Um, I was, I was in, I was doing a lot of pop music uh, back in the day, top forty music uh, through the '80s and '90s. Um, I had always written a, a lot of orchestral music uh, through college, and that was really kind of what I pursued in the early '90s. Um, I got involved writing cartoon music. Uh, which I still love, and I don't know. Even even like watching shows in the in the um, when was Miami Vice out in the eighties, late eighties, eighty seven, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I started getting interested in uh, in television scoring and seeing what Jan Hammer was doing with contemporary sounding music, but also sounding like film score at the same time. Um, so I started, I probably, you know, late 80s, early 90s, I really started getting into other aspects of, of, um, of scoring. Um, but, I, you know, I still love the traditional orchestral writing. Uh, I was also influenced by Miami Vice. Uh, I went out and got a uh, an off white blazer. And... I was going to say clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Don Johnson was actually a taxi member? No. Yeah, I saw his name pop up in the database the day he joined, and there were, it was kind of like how I met uh, uh, what's his name from Journey, uh, Jonathan Kane from Journey. I, I literally sometimes I just go look at the database at the end of the day to see how many people joined, you know, where they're from, you know, America, Europe, Asia, whatever, and I see Don Johnson, and so uh, and I realized that there was there was no email address. So I called the phone number in this uh, British voice because Johnson residence. And I said, hi, it's Michael Lasco. I own a company called Taxi um, is Don there. And he goes, hang on, please. And all of a sudden, Don Johnson comes on the phone and goes, hey, how are you, man? I love your company. Uh, this is great. This is awesome. He was like the nicest guy. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I know a ton of famous people. Did he did he get any did he get any forwards? No, I think he ended up not submitting. He probably oh. got on a big TV show or a movie or something and just said, "Oh well, you know." I think that that happens sometimes. People um, that are actors and musicians, you know, when they're on a break between shows or films or something, so I'm going to concentrate on the music now, and then they get another part and they're gone. Yeah, I remember the um, the fellow who was his partner in. Uh, Miami Vice. Yeah. I can't remember his name, uh, but he was he was into um, singing or something. And I remember him making a statement at one time where he said he was going to win an EGOT. He was going to win an EGOT. EGOT Emmy, a Grammy, an oh. Oscar, and a Tony. Oh, okay. I've never right. heard that expression. I guess I haven't yeah. lived in LA long enough. Wow. Yeah, I'm only four awards away from an EGOT. Wow. Um, so if it's a woman, do they call it a she got? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so I, the, the choir is too many notes at the end. Delete those. A lot of people are asking, can you explain the developmental arc? I don't know if, if it's timely right now, but at some point we need sure. to address that. Uh, right, so my goal is to start small, start quiet, and then build to something more intense. It doesn't necessarily mean volume, but it just means more tense, more energy, more, um, more emotion, uh, you know, any number of elements that, um, that moves the piece along. So right now I, I do, I still, not that many instruments, but there's still, there's a lot of stuff in here right now. And I'll, I'm gonna try to thin that out as we go along. As I said, I throw in everything and then I edit stuff out. Um, so this was like the first half of the piece. Um, I'm going to do a transition. We're going to do a, uh, a riser, which is a zoom. And then it's going to start with something a little bit more energy-wise. Uh, still, I'm not going to use drums, but we're going to go into some of these ostinatos and see if we can pick up the energy a little bit. So do you actually know, do you have a personal formula that... I'm going to go this many bars in before I take it up a notch and then this many bars before I bring it back down? Or do you do it by feel? Um, mostly by feel. I try to map out, like I mapped out, I want to do a minute and a half piece. So I mapped out the number of bars, something like 48 bars at this. Wait, what is it now? Because uh, I changed the tempo. So, okay, it's going to be about uh, 36 bars which is, you know, it's not very long. Right. So um, with the tension cues and the CSI style cues, I, like the, the typical production music format is an A, B, A form, structure. A section, B section is similar but different. A section repeats the first A section, but adding elements to make it different and then to come to a conclusion. With the, the CSI type of stuff, I tend to break it down into two parts, A and B. And, and as I mentioned earlier, I often, they're often based on like a single chord, mm. uh, usually like a, just a minor key, um, uh, a lot of uh, droning and stuff. Um, because you're, you're, you're setting a scene and you're just adding elements of tension throughout the piece as, as we go along. And some of that tension comes from just volume. You make something quiet, you make something louder, uh, add different instruments. And once we get into this ostinato part, that's going to be the driving force that's, that's going to give it a lot more energy. Ostinato meaning wump, 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 wump kind of thing? Well, it's a repeated pattern. Yeah. So uh, an example of an ostinato that we might use, something like this. Let's see. Let me see if I can not turn off the computer again. <laughs> it's all right. I like hanging out talking with you. Uh, let's see. Hello, did this guy come back? Oh, I might have to restart my keyboard. Ah, there we go. Okay, Ostinato. That sounds like the Who. Yeah. The Who? <laughs> Okay, so, and then with something like this, we have um, uh, filters. Um, Okay, so the trick with this stuff is, is to make it subtle and not really stand out. It's really to support the whole piece um, because it's just, it, it's just a supporting instrument. Um, some of these, um, this, this is uh, eight DOs. Uh, it's from the Rhythm, Rhythmic Aura. Um, they have a couple of libraries with them. Um, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with eight DO. Uh, they have some libraries that, that just sound awesome and some are just, eh, you know. Um, but some of their hybrid st stuff, like the Rhythmic Aura, and another one is their um, hybrid tools, and I have a couple of things from that. Um, some of the drones. I, I, I played them earlier, but let's... I mean, 
those are amazing sounds. So the, that adds a lot of uh, energy to a piece. Okay, um, what was I going to add here? I'm going to look at, um, this is another type of ostinato, but this is an, ar an arpeggiator. Uh, this is from Heaviosity's uh, Intimate Textures. So I can play a chord and it'll cycle through the notes in the chord, or I can just hold one note. But this is a, a three notes of a chord. Or if I just hold down a note. So I could use either one of those, and those, and those both would be very helpful. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when I get to the second section. So let's find out where that is. It's... Um, so in 19 here. So let me set the breaking point there. 22. That's going to be my new section. And so I'm going to uh, lead into that with a transition of, uh, of a riser. And I'm also going to include a downer. So there's their opposite... Uh, opposite in the frequency spectrum. A riser goes and a downer goes uh, used in a lot of uh, EDM kind of music but works great in tension. And so let's let me set a two bar riser uh, and this is going to be using uh, Heaviosity's gravity. And let's see, I said I'm going to try this note. I can play it louder. Okay, so we'll add that. It's it's going to cover a span of two bars, uh, based on the current tempo. Oh. I should set the metronome on. Connected. Let's try this again. Okay. Um, what I'm uh, over here, you can't see it. I'm I have um, an iPad that I've customized with a uh, an interface to remotely control my DAW. And um, this panel, you know, this is great for if I'm in a in in a booth, you know, I'm remotely far from the the the, the computer. I can uh, I can record from here. It also has some pages where I can um, uh, just view. Uh, it has some vi visibility agents in Cubase that I can view, just say, all the violins, only the violins. Mm. So out of my 3,500 tracks, all of a sudden I'll just see all the violin choices I have. Do you have another iPad that lets you control your cat? Uh, that... Yeah, it has a little fish that swims around. Because <laughs> this one's for the dog, right? <laughs> this one's for the dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, let me put in this riser. And let's find the, the downer. Okay. Really deep sounds. Uh, I don't know how long this one is, so I'm going to have to move it around again, but I'll just record it in. That might work. Uh, so frustrating. Ariana, note to self, reach out to the people at uh, Wirecast and ask them why this happens, please. Come back, Steve. good at this yeah it makes two of us sadly <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so the second section is is going to feature a lot of the same um, 
harmonic stuff that we used in the first section, but now with a little bit more energy. So um, maybe I should re put in a, a repeat of the, uh, of the, let's start with the piano, but uh, a variation of the piano. Let me see, what do we have here? And it almost sounds like a high violin string uh, in the overtones. It's really kind of interesting. Um, all right, well, let's see what happens here. Let's just record something. Is what it is. <laughs> the reason I'm hearing the downer there is because um, it's just the the, the sequencer is just trying to catch up with the notes. So if I go back to two bars before that. I might also go ahead and put that that sub that we put on the opening, but do it again here. Just to add a little more gravitas to it. Uh huh. And and I'll play it a little bit louder too. Yeah, if that doesn't sound like COVID nineteen eating some flesh, <laughs> I don't know what does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and add some of that rhythmic stuff I talked about, the ostinato stuff. Um, so this will this will be what's going to give it a little bit more energy. Um, so again, this is the 8DO rhythmic aura, and they just have a bunch of little loops on you know a middle C. Here's this loop. The D, E. E or F. Anyway, so those loops are built in, but if you go up in the higher octave, uh, you can change the octave. So I don't know what the default is, probably in the key of C. So here's the first note, the, the first loop. Okay, now if I press the D key, it'll change it to a, the key of D. I, so it must have already been in there. Uh, oh, yeah, because I had, I had saved it that way. Uh, if I change it to the key of E, F, G, etc. All right. So this is not really meant to be melodic, but it allows you to get these loops and put them in uh, in the right key. Um, so I don't know which which one of these uh, ostinato pieces effects going to work. So I'm just going to play through this second section and then just hit some of these uh, patterns and see what see what sticks. It's got a nice bass pattern. Okay, so I think I'll stick with either one of these two earlier. And I can I can play both at the same time. I can do hit, hit two of them.
add that base one. And of course, you'd have to quantize them if I don't play them on the right beat, exactly on right. the beat. They're, they're out of sync. But brings up an, uh, sorry, uh, brings up an interesting question, which is, you know, all these sounds are available to everybody, and a couple of them that you're going through, I went, oh yeah, that sounds very CSI. And on one hand, you could say, yeah, I'm going for a CSI type thing. On the other hand, you want to make it different enough that it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like the last seven cues that the editor listened to. And you went, you kept moving forward, mixing things, combining them to come up with something original, which is good. If you, if you don't have editing skills to edit a, a synthesizer, uh, which is something you would probably do in like an Omnisphere or something, uh, this is the kind of library where it gives you a lot of choices and you can just start layering the different sounds, adding and removing. Um, I, I choose these sounds because they are typical of a CSI type of cue, but I don't want it to sound like everybody else. Right. So I try to make it my own in, in some way. Yeah, which you just did. I mean, literally inside of 15 seconds, it went from, oh, that sounds like CSI, oh, but it sounds like CSI, uh, oh. That's cooler. Oh, that's different. Ah, all, all inside of 15 seconds. Um, somebody in the chat room asked a question, which is probably somewhat relevant now, which is when you deliver stems of this stuff, on the occasion that you deliver stems and you've got risers or something that came from a library, you can't send out a, a stem on its own. For, or can you send out a stem on its own? Or do you fear that they might use a riser broken out, you know, on its own? a stem of just the riser and for and they might use it like that and then you violated the terms of use right well if it's if it's um if you only hear that sound if it's right. not mixed with any other sound yeah then you're violating terms of, of, of use and um, did the editors know not to do that if they hear a riser and they go oh that would be awesome right there for you know when somebody turns around and something happens and would they have the the well, I would hope because at that point they've kind of taken that as their own. It's it's no longer part of your composition. Oh. If they're just if they're just in other words, like like the way rappers would sample, you know, a Frank Sinatra track. They're essentially doing the same thing to your track. Right. Um, yeah, and and they could take a riser. I mean, you know, trailer companies they will hire you. They'll pay ten thousand dollars for just a riser sound. You yeah, know, because that's the sound that they need. I mean, hopefully they're not going to just take it uh, and, and reuse it without, um, you know, without any kind of remuneration you know, right. for your effort. Yeah. I mean, they, you should still be credited for that if they do that. So, anywho, let's yeah, so. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and add these ostinatos and see what happens. So that I will have to quantize to make sure everything starts on, on the right beat, so everything's in sync. Um, okay, so where did, that, where did we leave here? So we have, in the second section, we have a piano. Um, we have a downer and a riser transitioning into it. Uh, we have the, uh, we hit the sub, uh, kick drum, and then we have the ostinato. So let's see what else we got here. What other toys can we play with? Uh, somebody who was probably late to the beginning of this, and you can keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to answer this question for them, but they asked, you know, how much, what's the least number of tracks, the most number of tracks? Well, uh, as Steve said early on, he throws everything, including the kitchen sink, that he thinks might be relevant and workable for the track, and then goes back and thins it out to find the stuff that makes it the most special when he mixes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there's no, you don't get paid more for <laughs> 200 tracks versus 12 tracks. Um, it's just what's right for the cue. And as, as Michael put it so succinctly that um, I throw everything in and then edit it out 
you know, as I go, because I, you know, I'm not sure how I want to arrange this yet. And sometimes th by putting in one thing inspires me to do something else later. Um, and as I said earlier, this is, I don't feel like this is musical composition because I'm just sculpting these sounds. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to add something, take something away. And it's a totally different thing. You know, I'm not sitting down with a pencil and paper at a piano and writing out this, this chord progression and this melody. Um, but that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, this because this is, it's a utility and this is what's necessary for these, these crime shows. Um, and my goal was originally, you know, as I'm calling it pandemic response, right. as to be something that could be um, very heart wrenching and dramatic. Um, and it might be taking off in, in, in a little bit of a different direction. Um, but I can always tame that down. I can always bring things down a little bit. Um, but let, let's, let's keep on with the, um, uh, some of the arpeggio stuff and, and see what else I can, I can put in there to just make this a big cluster F of noise. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wanted to do some of this stuff. This is, which is the right one. Oh yeah, this is this is killer. This is that's blaring in here. Is that too loud for you guys? Uh, it's not too loud, but it's loud. Okay. Uh, it's like a ten and a half. Ten. And a half. <laughs> well, if it's not at eleven, then I'm not yeah. worry about it. D, D oh, minor, just, D minor just, at eleven, please. Uh -huh, I can just play it a little softer. Uh, let's see what was the other one. This, Okay, so this was from the Heaviosity Novo strings, and this is a, uh, an arpeggio pattern using organic instruments, and this is like a cello. Uh, I think it's mostly cello. I could look it up. So they, they take these sounds, and they, they layer a bunch of different instruments together. In fact, let me just take a quick look and tell you what, the, what this is. Um, so they're using a low ensemble spiccato, which is a very quick playing, viola spiccatos and cello spiccatos. So yeah, all the low string instruments. And they've built in a rhythmic pattern that repeats. And I try to use this, you know, just judiciously to not um, be like, you know, hey, you just put in loops, you know. <laughs> uh, you want to make it kind of interesting. So I, I, I'll play, like, here's this low pattern. Okay, so it's a little sparse, and then the you know uh, the rhythm rhythm pattern changes as the notes go up the keyboard. So I can take that in and out. So I'm trying to keep all around the D minor chord. Okay, so as each uh, octave goes up higher the pattern gets a little bit more complex rhythmically. Let's see if I can do this in one pass. last note before it repeats. All right, let's see what that sounds like. So you could hear the intensity building and building and building, and no drums. Thank you. 
Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and add that low sub kick right on the down on the uh, on the stinger. Cool. All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tracks. That's the whole piece. Um, I'm going to look at a couple of other instruments that I had thought about using and see if there's uh, anything I can um, add in there in my kitchen sink before I start pulling stuff out. Um, this is from the um, Heaviosity Vento Woodwind Library. And this is where they have a lot of these, um, I call them affected instruments, but it's... Um, well, let me just play. This is low, low woodwinds. So it's just a crescendo. Um, let's see, staccato waves. They just sound kind of random. It could could add some interest. I would only do that like once in the piece somewhere, you know, just to add something. I, you know, you wouldn't want to make it like a repeated pattern. Right. Uh, let me just start from the beginning and see if see if this sounds. I'll just go ahead and record and see what happens. from the intro. Oh no. Come back. <laughs> Wirecast, you're going to be hearing from me tomorrow. Where'd you go, Steve? I think he's busy turning knobs, doesn't even know he's off air yet. There he is. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. You missed it. It was really great. Okay, I'll, I'll play that back in a, in a second. Um, Let's see what it, oh bands this is I I have to find a place for that it's so cool clusters um, let me try these bands I got to find a place for them Yeah, that worked. That mm -hmm. was very cool. Uh, I have similar stuff with the, the brass. Low brass flutters. That's very cool. Uh, clusters. Uh, let me try the flutters and see what we can do. Let's put this in the next section. It's just adding texture to it. It's yeah, really... I mean, it, it's also starting to develop an arc. Correct, yeah. Um, try not to lose focus of starting small and getting bigger, because, you know, tend to hell I have, like, too much all the way through. So uh, at some point, I might need to start editing. We're at 5.15. We're, we're going to kind of wrap it up here in a minute. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know what you know much else that I can add. I'll tell you what I will do. Those I, I will edit this down. Um, you know, probably you know take some stuff out and and, and do a good mix on it. Um, I don't know if I'll add a whole lot more uh, to what we've already added, but I'll play from the beginning. I guess I can get rid of that um, drone that we originally had. We're, we're not using that. Um, I, I want to add something. Bonzo in the chat room says, when the screeners say arc, they should be saying climb. Not necessarily true. Um, mm -hmm. It's not always a climb. Uh, an arc just means that it it feels like it's going somewhere rather than just being a flat line all the way through. Yeah, think of it as um, you know, like in a in a movie, you have an arc of the story, and it starts somewhere and, and you know builds up to the you know to the th third act, which is the climax. And you have a similar thing. It's not necessarily a volume climb, not necessarily an energy climb, but it starts somewhere and goes somewhere else, and it should be a satisfying ending. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and play this from the beginning and um, see what we've got. I'm going to do, I'm going to add one little thing at the end, a little swipe up. So it ends on that. I know where this is. Quantized. Yes, it sure did. God darn it. Can I, what if I undo? No, I deleted it. All right, redo it. Okay, and I think there was an extra cello note that I'll, I'll figure out what that was. Where was that? Okay, that sounded fine. All right, yeah, so I'll, I'll edit this up later and, and clean it all up. Uh, but I don't think we can do much more than that. I don't all think right, we can so, do any more damage today. So what we should do is when you are done, are you going to do that tonight? Uh, probably not. I'll probably do it in the morning. 
Okay, so by midday tomorrow, Los Angeles time, we'll have a cleaned up version of this. We'll have a link posted for you in the comments section under the archive oh, video, so that way people can go see it there. Um, and they've had some questions, so let's uh, take the questions. Um, somebody asked about, um, as you build things up in volume, doesn't that make it dangerous for the editors to use it because it may step on dialogue, but they would determine that as they're editing. Mm -hmm. um, they are going to choose this piece based on the scene. So if it's something that requires a lot of energy and there may not be dialogue, they're not going to choose something that's really busy and loud uh, for dialogue pieces. Right. You know, you know, unless it's like a rescue operation where, where firefighters are yelling, and, you know, and it's all a bunch of probably explosions anyway. So you're not even hearing the music hardly. But yeah. yeah, they're going to go ahead. Uh, if they were going to use this in a CSI lab scene, um, it would be a shot of, you know, the boss walking out of the lab, the person in the white lab coat uh, putting the slide on, on the microscope. You would see the external shot of that. And the next thing you would see would be the coronavirus under magnification. And then maybe the person then back to the person lifting their head up, you know, like I found it. Um, yeah, and it may be like when we get to the tr transition into the second half of it, then all of a sudden there's there's um, more happening. You know, they're they're bringing in patients. You know, in a, into an ER. You know, and there's just it's just more intense. Um, you know, uh, more of a sense of urgency at that point. And oh, I had a question and I lost. Oh, uh, just to be clear, because I think that there are a fair number of people watching today that really don't have much experience with this, maybe haven't seen a lot of taxi TVs, but it's okay. You can make up for that. Um, they don't know that it's extremely rare, like one in 500 or one in a thousand usages that they would ever use the whole queue. The, oh, the, almost never. Yeah, the video editor is going to cut this thing up and just use pieces of it because the scene's not going to last 90 seconds. It might last 14 seconds, right? Yeah, so the edit point in this piece is that uh, transition to the to the middle section. So after the riser, boom. Go ahead and At play it. Spot. So that is where they're going to... Uh, Okay. Yeah. So they would probably pick it starting from here. That would have been after the edit. Okay. Um, so let us know how many tracks he used. He already mentioned, I think he used nine tracks, he said? Something like nine, yeah. Okay. Um, do you expect the editor to cut on any four-bar repeat? I don't understand it really either. Uh, <laughs> not really sure what, what they mean. Yeah, I mean, editors cut... Which is, the editors don't sit down and think about bars. I mean, there may be editors, a fair number of them that are actually musicians, but they're not going to sit down and say, okay, so we got a four bar repeat here. They're just going to listen to the music and go, this would be a good place to come in. Um, I don't have a good out point for what I need. Let me scroll further down the track. Oh, that's a nice piece. And then just match, you know, put those together and make it the length that they need it to be. Is that a correct statement? Correct. And, and I would probably edit a stinger for them that would start right here, just uh, like a bar before it ends. So you get that little rise up at, again, that little shush, and, a, and then the big hit. Uh, let's see if this would work. Okay. Yeah, I've got an extra kick in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'll figure that out. Um, uh, but, you know, that would be the stinger. And what they would, the editor would do, they would take that piece... And they said, this is where we want the scene to end on, or this piece to end on. They would take the rest of your track and cut it and then just slide over that stinger and edit it together. Now, I would hope that most of these guys have some kind of musical ability where they can hear the beats and they can make an edit so it sounds rhythmically correct. Yeah. Um, question, how many projects do you work on at a time? Um... 
generally one, I mean, like I did this 10 track album for this client. I, I could not work on anything else. I had finished that project and then I can move on to other things. I'm not that popular. I don't do that much stuff, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you worked a lot, you still wouldn't be popular. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, just messing with this, Steve. Um, all right, other questions. Uh, oh, somebody's asking, Michael, are there any Taxi TV episodes with an editor? in the bay no there aren't uh we did an excellent thing with an editor at the road rally two years in a row actually she's so good i brought her back which is really she rare did. that i do that two years in a row it was fantastic learned i learned a lot yeah she was amazing the problem is because we're using copyrighted material uh, you know when we're doing it live and, and there's no way around that we're actually using footage from tv shows i've got an audio recording of that which is amazing but I can't put it on the air, so, as it were. I can't put it on the internet because there's copyright material. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be in big, big trouble if I did that. So that's why you Come go to the, to the rally. Yeah. I mean, we do stuff at the rally that I think other conventions don't get that creative or don't understand what people really want to learn. And we go out of our way to do that. And that's why you come to the Red Rally. That's also why we do Taxi TV. Um, question do you need to think of edit points for your track if i add a droning sound throughout the song it might be hard to edit uh yes and no um because if they cut it on the down on the downbeat of a bar that drone is just going to start from that point on you know you it's not leading in right it's just at the downbeat so i don't think that's a problem i mean you might have to edit so you don't get a, uh, uh, you know, sound that sounds like a, like an edit, like a cut. You know, you might need to uh, put in a little bit of a, a fade in on that on that one drone. But it depends how isolated that it is to begin with. You know, you probably wouldn't hear it anyway. Right. Um, yeah. That, I mean, there are times that, like, if you had a cymbal wash and it happened to go over. A beat oh, yeah. at the Those end of a are mission. Dangerous. Yeah. yeah, that that you'll hear go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't. You need to. Yeah, you do need to think about those things and maybe not have those in transitions where you would consider it an edit point because then you've you've broken the edit point. Right. You know, um, it makes it difficult to use. Miguel wants to know, do you spend a, a lot of time looking uh, into these new sound libraries and then testing them? How do you get to know all these sounds? Good question. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I spend a lot of money on this stuff. And it's, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's part of your business. You kind of have to. Um, and I, whenever I get a new library, and try not to buy too many libraries at, at once, buy one at a time and sit down, find some time when you're not on a, working on a project and sit down and go through every sound in that library and make notes. Find out which ones you think would work because a lot of times you get libraries that only 30% of the sounds are any good. And, uh, and that's what I meant about 8DO. I have kind of a love-hate relationship. With right. that. Some of this stuff is fantastic and some of it's like totally unusable and I just don't know what to do with it. Um, have you checked out Randon Purcell's new library that he's building? Uh, are no, you aware? I have not. Uh, he's got some incredible stuff. I, I, I can't remember. Does anybody remember the name of the company? Not Blockbuster. I can't think of it right now. But um, I've watched the videos, and they're incredible. Hey, do you know Randon? Have you met him at the rally? I have. You know what? I've never met him. You guys would get along really, really well. He, he's a very focused, very hardworking, very serious but lovable guy. Not unlike yourself. Um, very pro, you know, and he and a couple of other guys, I believe they're both taxi people, um, have created these libraries, um, totally manipulatable uh, Fallout Music Group. Um, yeah, you should Google that after the show and go check their stuff out because 
all the things that they found themselves doing, um, combining other people's stuff to make sounds, they just said, this is ridiculous. Why should we have to start from scratch? So they built a library of stuff that is kind of editable on the fly, but it comes too hard to explain. Just go mm, check I'll out. Fall. Yeah, yeah. It, you would really, really like it. I'm cool. positive yeah. that. Yeah, I haven't um, bought anything in a couple of weeks, so I need to look at some. <laughs> <laughs> some guys have a drug habit. Steve yeah. has a sound habit. Exactly. Uh, do you still have your cat? Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wirecast, I hate you. He'll be back. There he is. About that. Um, what was your cat's name that I liked so much when I was at your house? Oh, I have so many. Probably Henry. Yeah, it was Henry. Henry's still alive? Oh, yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, send him my best. Larger than life. <laughs> He's a famous cat, right? He's been on TV. He is. He's been on TV. Uh, tell everybody the show that Henry was on. <laughs> um, he, was, he was not the subject, but oh. we were on uh, an episode of My Cat from Hell a few years ago. <laughs> And uh, at the time, we only had two cats, and um, and Jackson Galaxy fell in love with Henry. He wanted to, he wanted to steal him. <laughs> that show's still on, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah, you should get some music on there. I should. <laughs> anyway, um, before we go away, I want to tell everybody: buy this book. I am not plugging it because I make money on it. I'm plugging it because it's an incredibly good, incredibly comprehensive book. Steve did an amazing job. How you found the time to do it, I do not know. Uh, we will have the link um, posted in the comments below the video. Make sure that you like us, please. We really, really need those likes. Um, make sure that you subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And don't forget, check back middle of the day tomorrow and you will find a link to where you can go listen to this track. Can you also post it on your taxi profile as well? Sure. All right, and we'll have it for you in both places, SoundCloud and his taxi profile. Um, Steve, as always, man, great to hang out with you. I, I, oh, I always love, a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for asking me again. Oh, I love it. Uh, can't wait to have you back. This was really, really, really educational. I think people learned a lot from it. Good. Um, they're saying all kinds of wonderful stuff in the chat room about you. There, people are reading it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just tons of thank yous. All right, with that, uh, send my best to Leanne. I hope we get to see each other in the flesh someday. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> look, soon. I look Hopefully forward soon. to that. Thank you very, very much. Great right, job. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. And with that, I bid you all a fond farewell until tomorrow's taxi quarantini happy hour right back here at 4 o'clock. Bye, Steve. Bye, everybody. They love you. <laughs> <laughs>